Hello and welcome uh, to this Night's Watch Stormflower painting tutorial. This video um, is part of a collaboration between Jason from West Coast Bannerman and me, Janek, from Tabletop Warden. Um, Jason uh, painted the first part of this model and I did some uh, finishing steps, including um, how to base this video, uh, this mini. and. Yeah, it, it was a very cool process and uh, for me personally, I learned a lot. And yeah, we hope that you will enjoy um, this video and learn a lot, of, a lot of stuff. Hey, how are you doing today? We're going to paint a Night's Watch Sworn Brother. First step here is I prime the miniature in black. This is what we call a Zenithal highlight. Um, tons of videos out there to look on how to do this, but basically you black undercoat the model, and then you come back with a white, a nice little light dust of white or a gray. I used uh, gray sear gray from Citadel, and you can use it with an airbrush or if you have just a like a rattle can white primer, just give it a nice little dust, kind of just from the top down, and it'll kind of bake in these little shadows already. So as we paint the miniature, it will help. Uh, build the shadows up for us. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, we're going to base the miniature before we paint it. So this is a great product that I like to use. It's really simple and really quick. Um, from Vallejo, it's called Earth Texture uh, Acrylics. And if your local store doesn't have it, you can usually get it on uh, Amazon. And basically what it is, is it is a paint that is combined into a paste that makes a nice basing material. So we're gonna simply just dab a little bit out. We're gonna add it to the base of the miniature. Like that. And you just kinda dab it around and kinda get it to settle where you wanna settle. You wanna be a little bit careful here because um, it will dry and you don't want it to dry on any parts of the miniature. So you just kind of slab it on there, kind of move it around, just kind of like a stippling effect. And I just kind of go out to the edge of the base like that, kind of push that glob back. And then when this dries, it's going to dry like a nice sand. So we get this down first because you'll find, I, I found when I first started using this product that um, you'd, paste, you'd paint the miniature nice and you do the boots and all that kind of stuff and then you would slob this, um, you know, this paste on and sometimes it gets up on the boots or you clip the back of a cape or something and you've already done a nice paint job there and it kind of takes away from it. So the best thing to do generally is to do this step first and it'll dry uh, fairly quickly but we're going to be painting the miniature so we're not really going to be concerned with this being wet or not because we're not going to touch this again until we're absolutely finished the very final step so you just kind of work your way around easy, you know, nice and easy and a little gap in here that we missed so basically that's it and what it looks like is it's a nice painted on sand and you don't want to use a good brush for this this is kind of a crappy little you know dollar brush or you know you pack at Walmart or something but um, you want to make sure you clean these off because it's going to leave like a, a dry paste on there and, and use a definitely don't use the water that you're doing with your paints either get a separate container or you know sometimes I usually just go wash it out completely um, at the sink and then come back. Okay, now looking at this miniature, we all know what Night's Watch is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be black, but you know, just plain black would be boring, so we're going to get a bunch of different shades of dark colors. And there's a lot of leather parts. You'll see he's got his, his leather, there's lots of belts and straps, and then we've got the big great sword um, and some chain mail and some cloak and some fur. So let's start with 
we're going to use a combination of all the different paints. We're going to use some contrast paints. We're going to use some army painter paints. We're going to use <coughs> some citadel paints. There's really no wrong combination to use, just whatever kind of paints you like. So first thing we're going to do, got some Black Templar contrast paint. We're going to shake it up real quick. And that clicking sound is just a agitator and drop the stainless steel ball bearing into the um, the bottle and you can get the Ar army painter makes them you want to use stainless steel though otherwise they'll rust basically we're just going to take the cloak here first thing we're going to do is we're going to do under where the they set a little there's a little bit there under the chainmail area so we're just going to block that in real quick with some contrast and then we're going to take that and we're going to come down the outside of the cloak and when you put the contrast on you just want to move it around nice and easy make sure it gets a nice spread same thing with like when you do washes and stuff try to avoid the pooling because then it's going to leave you know, this one you're not really going to see, but when you use different colors like reds and blues, you'll get a pooling effect down at the bottom here, and it can look uh, not look the cleanest if you don't uh, clean it up. So we're just going to get all over the outside of the cloak, kind of like so. We've got parts of his cloak up here, so make sure to just block that in. And this particular brother of the watch will give him some black hair. So we'll go ahead and just put a base down on his hair. If you're using a dark contrast color like this, you want to be careful because any of the areas that you get on and you're going to use a lighter contrast, you're going to see the black through it. So you just want to be careful of that as you're moving around. So. We're just going to get all of his hair here. There's a lot of different styles of painting, and I'm more, I like a more realistic look to my miniatures, so I stay away from like high fantasy looking colors. Um, so I'm going to come back here with some Saigor Brown, which is a nice dark brown. And what we're going to do with the Saigor Brown is we're going to get the inside of the cloak. So I actually went over this part on accident because that's actually part of the inside. So we're just going to go back across that so it has a nice brown hue to it. And then we've got some over here. following inside the line there and then so one other part we're going to do real quick is we're going to outline this leather pad here because we want to use two different types of leather look so it kind of stands out a different bit and then if you flip them over you know it's He's got a lot inside the cloak here, so we got to make sure to get inside the cloak, and you know, don't be afraid to turn your miniature upside down and get the brush in there any way you can. Okay, and now we're gonna do the other side. I'm gonna get the inside here. Okay, with that part completed inside there. We're going to continue to do the outside here. Just going to run a bead down here. Just kind of pick out the out edge of the leather here. Do a little run across the bottom here. And then what we're going to do is 
we're going to come in and we're going to get the boots as well. You'll notice there's a bunch of fur and stuff here on the boots, so we're going to leave that alone for now. I'm just going to come in here. And it's okay if we get it on the, the sand. We're going to paint over that later anyways. So now we're going to come in with some snake bite leather contrast. Okay, and now we're going to get all the leather parts. So I always like to dab it on the camp here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and get this part of the leather. Just make sure you get a nice coat in there. Get it down in all the cracks. Okay, so just make sure you get all the leather in there. Because they're in the winter, we're going to go ahead and give them some gloves. And we're going to also put some leather here on the hand of the, the hilt of the sword the handle here. But what we're going to do is we're going to highlight them in different colors. So don't worry that it looks the same now. We're going to pick it out later. Okay, there's a big, his big chest strap going across here. So we're going to get that. And that continues on into here. So we're going to do that. and easy coming through and there's one last little bit over here and just right inside there and right back down the other side and there you go okay so there he is so far okay so next step Let's get the fur, and for the fur, let's go with some basilican gray contrast. And we'll also do his clothes in that color as well. going to come in here on the fur you can see there's a little difference there between the black and this gray it's not as heavy as the black but we just want to kind of move it around make sure it gets in all the cracks and crevices because it's just going to make the next step's a lot faster because there's a lot of definition laid down by the contrast. So I just started using contrast here probably in the last month or so by doing been doing some commissions and I find it very useful. I like to use it for washes too because it just really gets in there and you can thin it down with a contrast medium or flow aid um, and it makes it really runny and it's a great turns it into a nice deep wash so we're moving around the fur here and just making sure a little bit down in there and then we're gonna get the pants 
Actually, let's give it a run through the chain mill here just to darken it up. And come back with some silver. Okay. We've got his shirt. Get my shirt. And really, I mean, you know, it's up to the up to you. You can paint these any colors that you want. That's what's great about miniature hobby is um, the you know I've seen Lannisters I usually play Lannisters so I've seen Lannisters painted in purple you know they don't always have to be red you can literally paint them any color that you want you know there's no standard rules on they have to be painted this color so you know whatever color you like you can paint it that color next we're gonna do the sword so we're gonna start off with a base coat of, if I can find it. Ah, oh, there it is. Balthasar Gold. Give it a good shake. And put a little bit out on the wet palette. Just a little tiny drop. some water and then just kind of mix it up okay dab off some excess and then we're going to come in from gold do the pommel or the, the little end piece here so metallics are interesting just gotta kind of play around with them a little bit, and we'll come back and give it a second coat to make it better, uh, better coverage. So now we're gonna go to the crossbar of the sword. gold you know I usually start with a brass color you can even undercoat it in brown if you want it really makes the gold uh, stick out and we made a little mistake there on the sword so what I do is just come in with some water and I just kind of swish it around it's kind of like an eraser and then you just suck it up with a dry you know just keep drying the brush off coming in kind of erasing it there and it's not too big of a deal there because that's going to be covered in uh, silver anyways in a second so then we just keep working our way around the crossbar just like that and then and what a very really important is to I keep two separate uh, water cups one for metallics one for regular color because you don't want to rinse your metallic, if you're painting in metallics, you don't want to rinse it in your um, clean water that you're using for your colors because the metal flakes will get in there and then your colors will be off. Um, so I always keep a second one. Um, so this one's going to be Iron Breaker from uh, Citadel. And again, just another little dab on the wet palette. Get a little swish. Kind of like Duncan Rhodes says, just kind of twist it to a point. Maybe give a little bit on the rag just to a little bit more control. And then you just come in and we're just going to run it up the sword. And we'll come back and get the the buckles and all that stuff on the model later once we get closer to the end because otherwise we're going to just redo it over and over again because as we highlight some of the colors if you make a you know a misstep you're going to have to go back and fix it so it's easier if you just do it all at once okay and we're going to 
you know we're not going to go with that detail on the little sword down here so we're just going to give it some metal looking color okay and we're going to get chain mill here and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull down on these parts here like that okay next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of black this is uh, AK black We'll put a little bit on the palette there. A little dab of water. Swish it around a little bit. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to darken the shadows of the cloak. So we're going to come in here and just kind of run a bead down the folds like that come in here like that we're just going to kind of make these a little darker because we're going to build up the other colors and it's just going to give it that much more of a contrast so we're just going to get in here get all these folds up here a little bit down here and then you'll see there's some ridges running along the shoulders here so we're just going to kind of come in here like that and just darken those down same thing over here Okay, and for the face, we're going to come in with a base coat of some Bugman's Glow, and then we're going to come in here and just pick out a little bit of the face here. we're going to do next is we're going to come back with some Gorthor Brown and we're going to come back and pick out some of the leather details just a little, little dab on the wet palette and when I say a little dab it's like you know Here's the brown I just did. So we're talking like two or three drops out of the, the bottle. A little dab of water in there. Mix it up. And then now we're getting into a little tighter detail. So we're going to switch to a smaller brush. So this one's just a little smaller. Or I mean it's a lot smaller, but coming back with a smaller brush. And be a little tedious but we're going to start by picking out these squares just like that okay and just come down the whoops so see when you make a little mistake like that got a little paint in the fingers so we're gonna come back with like I said before a little drop of water kind of work it around in there and dry your brush off and then come back and soak it up and there we go that's gone so we're just gonna continue picking out the glove just kind of, I go one direction, kind of follow the contour of the hand. Mm. 
Let's give the, sh the boots a little leather to them too. So the boots are just going to kind of pull across like that. You just kind of stagger it. come back with some Baylor Brown. This is a real bright leathery brown. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to use this to separate the sword grip. So for the sword grip, I'm just going to follow the lines of the grip. Okay, and then turn the miniature a little bit. Just kind of get in the back there. down the front. So just kind of follow. Just, you know, different browns to kind of mix it up a little bit. Because if they just all black and all brown, same color, it's just going to look boring. So, give a little bit of difference here. Okay, and then as we go, we'll clean it up a little bit better. And we've got this nice thick belt in here. We're going to do that one too with this color. So it's a little different from the others. And it's got some little rivets on it, but we'll get those later. Let's go back to the cloak here. Okay, and we're going to come in with Mechanicus Standard Gray. a little bit of black to it so on the palette here so that's the gray we just put down and we're going to take some of our black pull our black into it and make it a little different so this will help blend the colors a little bit so it's going to take it up just a darker color Add a little bit of water in there. And just keep mixing it around. And let's get a little bit more black. Come in, pull some black out. Get that a little bit more dark. pretty good and I always clean the brush off a little bit because it's really hard sometimes but sometimes you want you got to avoid getting the paint down in the fuller here so we're just going to do our best to try to keep it off of there and then we're going to go ahead and get some on the brush 
come in to the outside here and we're just going to follow the ridges just kind of trace the line down like so we want to make it a point to you know stay out of the the darker ridges that we did earlier so like on this side here this can be tricky so you just want to come in on the high parts okay and just keep on hitting only the raised parts of the cloak so and the cool thing about it is if you look at it in different points of the light you know the it gives a good outline of where to go so we're just following this around okay so that's quick and easy you can already see kind of the definition there and so we're just going to kind of build that up as we go and then we're going to come inside and do the same thing for that brown however we're not going to go too much on the brown because we want to keep it we want to keep the brown dark because it's inside so I'm going to use this color here it's from Vallejo it's leather brown these ones I don't have ag agitators in so you're just going to give them a good shake okay. a little bit of water to it on the palette same thing we just did but inside here so just on the raised ridges pull that up and then we've got the color break here so we're just going to stay on the bottom side like that and we'll make it we'll blend it together later but for now, we're just getting the blocking out the highlights, as they call it. Now we're going to take a what they call an edge highlight. So GW loves to use these on like Space Marines and stuff. So we just use the flat of the brush and just turn the model to where you've got just the raised edge. And we're just going to follow this down like that. And then we're going to come in on the bottom part like so. back we got to turn the model around because it's a weird angle so then same thing side of the brush just coming up okay and then back down the other side same thing just edge of the brush there we go along the bottom here Okay, so now let's jump into the fur and the shirt. So we mixed our Mechanicus Gray with black last time. Now we're going to just go straight Mechanicus Gray.
with our small brush again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the shirt and the furs. Just throw a nice bead here. I'm not going to go too far under because that would, you know, kind of be in a shadow area. So just kind of flip it over. Nice and easy. And then back here on the shirt. Same thing we did on the cloak. We're just going to kind of follow the ridges. twist over here so we can get the inside part like that now we're going to do the fur here and this is something you can dry brush this part if you like but I find it faster to just come in and pick it out so again you can even kind of do a little like a wet a wet brush you want to call it that and just kind of hit all the top edges just kind of you know turn the brush sideways and just kind of drag it across the hot the, the raised edge ones okay start picking it out nice and easy whatever is easier for you up down or if you want to do the side part like that whatever is easier for you and just kind of get all the little raised edges Just looking for any missed spots or anything like that. Okay. And let's put some of that dark gray mix we had with the black and the mechanicus. And we're going to pick out a little bit of the hair here with that color. We'll wash this in black so it'll darken back up, but we just want to kind of pick out some hair parts here, like so. Just trying to get the ridges if you can. Okay, and Next on the flesh tone color is we're going to go to Katie and flesh tone. Give it a good shake. A little drop on the palette. And for here, we're just looking at the, the high ridges of the face. So that would be the nose, a little bit up here, forehead, cheekbones. Now, I'm not an eye painter. I have n Every time I've ever tried it, they come out looking like a a cartoon drawn by a four-year-old and I'm not I don't want my miniatures to look like that so I just go with the high edges and then we'll come back with another color we're gonna give this a wash first and then we'll come back and clean it up again a little dab on the mouth and so there's kind of a quick face highlight gives a good definition And now we're going to move on and come back and do another, the next layer, layer up on the fur. And this is Grace here from Citadel. So a 
lot of times, you know, I you can brace your hand and then you're just gonna come in and just nice little clips just on the highest parts. Or if you want a dry brush, you can do that too. As far as the clothes go, just a high, high edge highlight. So that just means the very, very high edge. That. And then in here. here just come across okay next thing we're going to do to make a little smooth smoother of a transition I don't really ever use like straight white so we're going to use a little bit of wraith bone and we're going to mix that in with the grace here just to lighten it up a little bit a couple drops and mix it up Now we're going to finish off the cloak, which is the fine highlight of Mechanicus Gray. So now we're just going extreme top highlight, so just the highest point, pull a line down, like that, and you're just, just skimming. Now we're going to use some Reichlin, whoops, Reichlin flush shade. This I, I always use this right out of the pot. So similar to the contrast, I always use the top. So we don't want too much on the brush because we just got a little tiny part here. And then we're just going to drop it in a little bit in the mouth area and just kind of go around the face and that's that. Okay. Next we'll come with some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to do some of the leather parts. Okay, specifically the handle. It's 
very transparent, so it's gonna you're still gonna see the other color through the bottom, which is good. It's just gonna take that edge off it, so it's not such a stark brightness. So just kind of work that back and forth, and then as it'll dry, it'll dull that color down a little bit, which is good. And if it's not, you can always wash it again. Same thing on this belt. We're gonna come through and just give it a nice wash and you know, sometimes you might go over it twice if it's still not to where you want it to be. Okay, just kind of work it in. Rotating the miniature. And we got the bits on the sword here. Go ahead and give the the gloves a little wash too. Darken that leather up a little bit. See how that pool is there? We don't want to have that pool. So just kind of keep moving it around. Same thing over here. thing I saw on a video is you want to thin it down to make a glaze and it's like water bottle caps or whatever nice quick use so we're gonna come with some known oil give it a good shake and here we're gonna dip it into the bottle cap close it up. Then we're going to come with some Games Workshop Lamy and Medium. We're going to thin this out a little bit. Just put a few drops in there like that. And give it a good stir. Okay, so now we're going to come in and we're going to get this fur like we were talking about. And the beard, just kind of dull that down a little bit. Just working it around, and then we're going to take it down the blade of the sword. I always like to lay a bead down the middle of the sword here. And the fuller, I believe that's called. Just give the outside a nice one. Just kind of come in there like that. And we're going to come back and kind of, oops, tone down some of these highlights here. I like that, just working it in. A little bit over here. Take the shirt. Kind of just 
working it in. And if we need to, we can come back and do a second one. Just kind of lower the, kind of help blend it together. Put that under here too. Gonna go back through the here a little bit too. Give us a nice glaze, the cloak here, and kind of help bring these colors a little together. And just a nice thin, almost like a glaze. It doesn't matter if it ends up shiny because we're going to come, we're going to finish it off with some Tester's Dole Coat, which is by far the best uh, sealer for the miniature. I've used Tester's Dole Coat for probably 20 something years back in the old Warhammer Fantasy days. It's the only product I ever used. When I first started, I, I tried like straight Varathane and gloss coat, and it was horrible looking. But Tester's Dole Coat is. I think it's the best that there is and, and you know to spray your models with and that's you can usually find it at Michael's or you know for whatever reason because of COVID now uh, it's been a little hard to find but I've been able to find it on eBay um, and you know Amazon if you need to um, I went to a couple of my local modeling stores and like train hobby stores and stuff and they didn't have it they couldn't order it so then I went to Amazon and eBay and I was able to find it but that's by far and away the best way to coach your miniature so we're just gonna let that kind of dry and we're gonna come in to do the same thing for the inside of the cloak but we're gonna come back with Agrax Earthshade for that sometimes these are pain in the butt to deal with but we're just gonna kind of Yep, that one wants to close that time. So. Okay, so. Do that same thing, but we're going to come inside. And this one's just straight out of the pot. The ledge over here. Okay. Hey Yannick here. Um, like I said in the beginning, this part, this video is a collaboration between Jason from West Coast Bannerman and me, and I will just show you how to get the finishing touches onto the miniature and how to base it. So just let's get started. Um, this is the amazing job Jason left us uh, with. And what I want to do is to just pick up some highlights into the face, um, onto the gold, just finish that. And yeah, let's just get started. For the face, I will just use some Cadian Flesh Tone. It's the same color Jason used before. And just thin it down a little bit with water, with a fine brush. Just pick out some highlights again. face a little bit brighter and 
What we can now do is use a bit of our craze here and mix it slightly with um, our flesh tone we used before. Just get a little bit lighter. Then we Try to just pick out the highest highlights again. Just give the face a lot of definition and contrast. So this this draws the tension. Um, of the miniature towards the face, so with the fur and a good highlighted face, we have, we have a focal point which draws the attention to it. So we just need, um, yeah, we, we focus our highlights around the face. Um, exactly. Now I will just take a bit of my Mysterious Standard Gray. Mix it a bit with uh, our gray seer. Just get lighter gray, which I will just use to highlight some parts of the beard and the hair. Hair us again. What we now can do is just use some crazy again, makes it a bit lighter. Use the brush, maybe add a tiny little bit of water so the uh, paint runs a bit smoother. Just pick out a few hairs here. Now what we can do is just use pure grace here. Um, make sure that it has a good consistency. And just pick out a few hairs around the beard. Maybe on top. Like this to give him a grizzled look. What we can do next is um, looking at the gold. Uh, I will use a mix of Reckland Flesh Shade and Equix Earth Shade to wash it. Just mix it roughly 50 to 50. Um, and then apply it. We don't want it to be too brownish to wash, so we mixing the the flesh shade in there. Just make sure that that it has nice consistency. It isn't too shiny, but also isn't too looking too old. we also need to do is to pick out these metal parts all around there on the belt here these tiny parts here and also the bend of the knife uh, what we will do is just take our iron breaker again Just pick the parts out. Um, 
what we also can do with the iron breaker is just put it on there if our wash is dried we can then just pick out the edges here of the sword Also do with our iron breaker just go over the edges of the sword to just give it some some feel of sharpness after we darkened everything down with our wash. What we now need to do is um, take a bit of our nine oil and go over the the just use uh, just painted metal parts for this i will get my nine oil on my palette just to make sure that i have more control how much i have on my brush because these are tiny details and i don't want ruined the miniature with the wash now. Also what we need to do is um, just wash the metal here. Um, it's okay if it's a bit darker because um, um, we, we want our focus on the miniature be around the head and everything goes from light to dark to the bottom so this looks nice what you also can do is just use a bit of our grace here um, just pick out some of the hairs not all of them some of the hairs here what we also can do is just get from our mix of crazia and red bone and make some final highlights just around the head here so we can get something under the beard and top hairs just very slight what we now can do after the, our black wash has dried um, from our metal details just go back in with a little bit of iron breaker and just give him some highlights it's not much but some same we can do the same here for the chain mail here as well finish painting our miniature and of course you can go back in and highlight some of the cloak parts and of the leather parts here um, like Jason did previously uh, but if you if you want to save some time just focus around the head make the highlights here pop and the rest will just blend in perfectly okay so now I will let this dry and oh before I let this dry we can uh, go to our base for our base we just take a bit of so for our base here 
I will just take a bit of XQX Earthshade and Saga Brown, which we used previously, and just wash everything. Um, just give it a solid base coat to get a bit more shadow definition. Um, but it's up to you if you want a bit more of a darker tone for your earth. Uh, just use Saigor. And if you want a bit, go a bit lighter, then you can use Aquax or Shade only. Um, also, we don't need to care that much about rim uh, because we. We'll paint this later. Yeah, and that's about it. And we will let this dry and then just dry brush it a bit to get some highlights onto the into the mud. And after that, we can just apply a bit of snow and also um, darken the rim to one color. So for the so for the next step, um, I just removed my red, red palette for this. Uh, we need a sheet of paper like my underground here, and we want to dry brush. Um, the bottom of the of the miniature here the base uh, so because I wanted to stick with the color we already needed I go with the go top brown uh, then just get a bit apply it to your paper and then yeah, just swipe it like this and make sure there's not that much color left on the palette uh, on the brush and then we can just dry brush the base here like this so it picks up the the raised parts and leave the lower parts dark like it was before so um, for the rim of the base, I will just paint it black. Um, you can use whatever color you like or use for your other managers. Um, just that it has one clean color. Uh, I will use the button black we used previously. Um, just get some of it on the palette so that you can control how much black you have on your brush and then we just paint it on here even if it's black uh, most of the time it you need more than one coat um, that the black will cover all of the paints which was previous on there especially since we sent it to highlighted it with a white um yeah so just let it try for a bit and paint it again um later and repeat the process one or two times after we painted the base of the base rim of the miniature we can apply uh, a vanish over the the miniature just that all the, sh the shiny um parts from from the washes go away, so I use the Vallejo spray uh, of matte vanish, uh, but you can use whatever you, you have uh, in hand. That's also the reason why I didn't show that on camera. So <coughs> the miniature is now uh, completed with painting. The only thing we can do now is to create a base because it's Night's Watch um, Swamp Brother. I will um, use um, some ice sparkles and um, still water resin um, to 
to to emulate um, yeah just just some melting snow on, on the base so what we will do is using these this clash crushed glass ice sparkles i will mix it with the resin until i have um, the right consistency if it's um, too um, too wet um, you will just end up with so yeah i will mix these both and then i can just apply it onto the base um, here if you want you can further decorate this but I just let us try and then I will call this swan product finished so after um, you apply the snow uh, it's finally dried and the miniature is finished so just take a look all around um, I think it, it turned out pretty nice and I hope you guys learned something and yeah we hope that you guys enjoyed this video and also a quick reminder this video is part of the Song of Ice and Fire guilds, uh, guild drop which is in this month about the Lannister faction so go there check it out link is down in the video description and yeah there is another additional content about the Night's Watch, there's a battle report, there are articles on how you can play with certain commanders, also there's a podcast, so check it out, um, much good stuff about the, the Night's Watch and yeah, we hope you liked it and thanks for watching this video and also a special thanks to Jason who who has done the first part of this video and yeah check out west coast bannerman's other videos and yeah we see you in the next video bye